Here's a problem adapted from Bach, Velman, and DeVoe, Chapter 17, Problem 7. It's about shooting baskets, and uh, the mathematical content here is it's about Bernoulli trials, and specifically the geometric distribution to describe certain questions that you ask about the probability of certain things happening with Bernoulli trials. So let me uh, give you the specific context, and then we'll go back to what a Bernoulli trial means. So a basketball, po basketball player typically makes 70% of his foul shots, and we assume that the attempts are independent, so that each... Uh, attempt he makes at um, making a foul shot, it doesn't depend on what he just did or what he's done in the past. They're all independent of each other. And that's actually a fairly good assumption, um, contrary to what a lot of uh, sports writers think about streaks and things like that. Uh, let's find the probability that, well, let's get into the exact questions in a minute, okay? But first I want to talk about what a Bernoulli trial is, real briefly, uh, just amplifying what it's in the book. Um, there's three conditions that have to be true for a Bernoulli, a Bernoulli trial. It has to be uh, just a yes or no question right, that's being asked in each one. And it's usually ex uh, expressed as success versus failure. It's very important that um, we don't actually just say, okay, success is always a good thing, failure is always a bad thing. We just label one thing to be success and one thing to be failure. And so it's really up to us what we call a success and what we call a failure. Okay, but we do have to be careful which is which. Okay, it's going to be our labeling of what success and failure mean, and we just have to make sure we communicate that co uh, correctly and consistently just in our own work. Okay, so each time we do something like a basketball player trying to make a foul shot, it's either let's call a success making it or a failure not making it. Well, we might actually want to switch um, in some of these things, but that's that's definitely a yes or no thing. Okay, they have to be um, the same probability each time. Okay, so that's the 70% of his foul shots. We're assuming that it's not like in the start of the game he tends to make them more and then at the end of the game he gets tired. That would be a more complicated model. We just assume that each time it's like rolling a die, a 10-sided die, and if it comes up 1 through 7, he, gets, uh, he makes a shot. Okay, and very important, independent um, trials. Okay, so that the success or failure on each trial doesn't affect the success or failure on the other ones. Okay, and let me put in a little caveat, or at least very close to independent. The book talks about a very common example where you're picking a bunch of things from a large uh, population, like you've got um, a thousand balls in a bin and 300 of them are red and the rest of them are black, if you pick a red one, that does slightly affect the probability the next one would be red or black, but very, very, very little. And so um, as long as we're very close to independence, it's okay. This is true in all of our statistics stuff. Everything we say must be true, we really mean it must be true to a good approximation. Okay, so this is, these are Bernoulli trials. This is a classic example of Bernoulli trials, as long as we're assuming independence and that the same probability. Um, and then the geometric distribution that's specific questions. That talks about a specific kind of question about Bernoulli trials. And it's not by any means the only question we can ask. And in this same chapter, chapter 17, they also talk about uh, the binomial distribution, which is asking a different kind of question. But let's talk about the situation for geometric distribution. Geometric distribution, it comes up when we're asking how long to wait for first success. Okay, how many trials do we need to do, including that first success to get to get one success exactly? Okay, so that's exactly this kind of situation. What's the probability that he misses for the first time? And so this is going to be a big clue for using a geometric distribution. He misses for the first time on his fourth attempt. So it's actually very specifically it's um, make 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 miss. Okay. So in this case, um, as long as we want to always to use this interpretation of what the geometric distribution measures, we actually want to declare a success. So here, success means a miss, which seems kind of weird. But you've got to get used to, it's up to us what a success means. It's just a yes to a certain question. It doesn't necessarily mean a good outcome. Okay. So um, we've got, here's the, the parameters here, the probability of a success on each trial, that's a miss. That's 
little point 30, okay? And we always call that P. I'm going to put that in math mode. And the probability of a failure, that's in this case, that's a hit. That's a, a making the shot. That's 0 0.70. And we always call that Q. And that's always going to be equal to 1 minus P because it's either yes or no, success or failure. That's crucial to being a Bernoulli trial. Okay, so we've actually really done this kind of problem before. We're just codifying things, okay? What's the probability of uh, fail, 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 success, basically, okay? It's first is fail, and second is fail, and third is fail, and fourth is success. We've got an and of independent events, and we know how to do that, okay? It's the probability that the first is a failure times the probability that the second is a failure times the probability that the third is a failure times the probability that the fourth is a success. Okay, and guess what? All of these things are equal. All of these failures are equal because we're assuming same probability each time. We can use multiplication rule because we're assuming independence. Okay, so that's going to be good. Probably the first of, is a failure is the 0.70 because remember we're counting that a hit a, actually making the shot is a failure in this particular model. Okay, times 0.70 times 0.70 times and then we actually want the last one to be a success 0.30. Okay, I just want to emphasize this is exactly a problem we could have had um, in the in the previous chapter. Um, actually maybe two chapters ago when we were talking about the basic rules of probability and we're just saying that this is going to be a situation we're going to consider over and over again we're going to give it a name and kind of codify it okay so let's make that a little tighter we'll put it in math mode here it's 0.70 to the third power and notice that 3 is 1 minus than this guy so it's all it's this number minus 1 okay and then times 0.30 okay and so that is equal let me just put it down here. Probability of first success on fourth try, the success in terms of missing the basket, is just P, oops, let's put it in math mode, to the four minus one times Q. Okay, oops, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> just actually, it's totally backwards. Q times four minus one times P, because Q was the the failures. We're going to get a lot more failures than successes in a in a uh, geometric situation usually, because we're going to say fail, 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 and then one success. Okay, and so we're going to call that Q to the x minus one times P is going to be the general formula, where x equals um, number of tries to get that first success. You might think this is a little weird that I'm saying I know it's going to be four tries. You might think when we say this this phrase, you might think, oh, wait a minute. How do you know what this number is? Well, you say it's a what if. I'm going to say what if x is four? What's the probability of that? That's the way, the way probabilistic reasoning goes. You put in the four and you say, I don't know it's going to be the first successes on the fourth try. That's not a certainty, but I can calculate the probability of what would that happen. And then I could put in three or five or seven or ten or whatever for this number. And it's gonna you're gonna get different probabilities depending on what x is. Okay. So this is this master formula that you'll see in the in the start of chapter 17. It's the failure probability to one less than the number that you're looking for times the probability of that one success. Okay. And so what is this gonna be? Um, numerically it's about 10 percent 0.1029 so about 10.3 percent so about one tenth of the time it's going to be exactly that on his fourth attempt that he misses for the first time okay so let's go th through the other ones a little quicker probability of first basket on fifth try ooh now wait a minute now we're switching what we mean by success and failure okay so here success equals a basket and failure equals um, a miss. That's sort of more normal and now that, that might be a little bit more familiar, the thinking of success as getting a basket. Okay, So the reason we're switching in that way is we always want to be able to use this one standard formula. Q to the x minus 1 times P and Q is associated with failure, P is associated with success. So it's kind of this weird thing that we then actually have to switch what we mean by success and failure. May seem weird but that's the usual way to do it. Okay, so um, let's just put question marks there for a second. So here, the P is now um, 
success is a basket, that's now 0.70. And Q is 0.30. Okay? And so the probability of first success on fifth try, that's the geometric distribution, is just Q the X minus 1 times P. It's just that Q and P have now been switched. And so now it's going to be 0.30. This is 4 misses. The 5 minus 1 gives you the 4. And then times 0.70. You've got to get the probability of that last uh, success. OK. And then that, let's see if it likes that. Yeah. 5, uh, ooh, less than half percent. So that's 0.567%. That's very um, unlikely. And it makes sense. He's a pretty good free throw shooter. Uh, more than two thirds of the time, to get four, bat, four ma failures in a row and then nail it on the fifth attempt, it's a pretty unlikely situation. Okay. So you'd be pretty surprised to see that exact situation happen. Okay. Now, one more, a little more complicated one. He makes his first basket on one of his first four shots. Hmm. Okay. So this is going to be an or situation. So this is the probability of um, we just we have a success on the first one, or probability of um, a failure and then a success, or probability of fail fail success, or probability of fail 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 success. Okay, those are the possibilities to make his first basket on one of his first four shots. Okay. So it's either the probability, the, he makes the first one, and we don't care what happens with the, with the other ones. Or a disjoint possibility, mutually exclusive possibility, is that he does not get the first one, but he gets the second one. Another ex mutually exclusive possibility is that he fails both of them. Notice that does not overlap with either hitting on the first one or hitting on the second one. Or another mutually exclusive disjoint possibility is he fails on the first three. So it's really important that these are all mutually exclusive no overlap or else we couldn't use the sum rule. But we can, okay. So that's going to be, um, so let's see, making his first basket, we're now counting that as a success still. So still counting uh, making the basket as a success, okay. And so we're going to use the same P and Q here. Okay, so probability of success on the first one, that's just P. When X is 1, this is on the first try, Anything to the zero power is just one, and it makes sense. We're not, we don't have any failures here. Q shouldn't come in, so it's just P. Oops. Okay. Plus, okay. The next one is a QP because we need fail and then success. Plus Q squared P, plus Q cubed P. It's just a bunch of versions. It's all. It's it's exactly like these guys. This was a Q to the fourth times P. Is all the ones leading up to that. Okay. And so that's going to be 0.70. Um, notice there's a common factor of P, which I might as well take out, times 1 plus 0.30 plus 0.30 squared plus 0.30 cubed. It's a very common kind of sum. It's called a geometric series, a geometric summation, which is why this is called uh, the geometric distribution. You might have wondered, what does this have to do with geometry, triangles, stuff like that? Um, it's still a little bit vague, but at least it co connects with something else with the word geometric in it. Let's evaluate that. 99%. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, this is basically saying uh, the complement of this, about 0.8%, would be what's the probability that he doesn't make on any of the first four? So we could have done it in that way as well. There's, there's kind of some, some nice stuff to be said about uh, doing it with the complement principle. But this is a fairly straightforward way to do it. Um, so you can stop watching now, but let me actually go ahead and go on with the complement principle, okay? Because that'll show us something very interesting. Um, well, actually, let's see. Do we know enough to do the complement principle yet? Um, let's see. No, unfortunately, we don't. That's too bad. Um, if we knew it a little more, we could actually kind of connect this with some pretty cool stuff. But let's just leave it at this method. And 99% he's going to get on the first four shots because he's a pretty good shooter. 